psychopaths' uh, relations with others are superficial, uh, surface, uh, very, very little depth, uh, mostly style over substance. And the idea is to impress other individuals, to somehow put them in a position where you can manipulate them and so forth. And a corporation, I imagine, would be not unlike that in many respects. They would have public relations firms. They would be spending half their uh, time and a lot of their budget on trying to present a particular image to other people. And this image is a very superficial, and you never really get to know the real corporation. You're going to see what they want you to see. Uh, a psychopath is also uh, a grandiose individual, has a, uh, a very powerful sense of self, uh, believes that uh, he or she is the center of the universe, better, uh, smarter than everybody else. Uh, corporations, I suppose, almost by their very nature, would have to adopt this particular attitude. If they uh, took the stance that they were, in fact, inferior to every other company, uh, they're probably not going to get very far. So I imagine that they would spend an awful lot of time uh, explaining to others and to themselves that uh, we're number one, we're the best. Uh, the psychopath is also very manipulative, tends to manipulate, con, and deceive other people to try and mold them into something that they can use. Remember, the psychopath is really a predator, and uh, uh, as a predator, you're trying to groom and put your prey in the right position for you, where you can make some use of the, uh, uh, this particular object, is the way they would see them. Would a corporation be the same? Uh, to a very large extent, I would imagine so, uh, because what you're trying to do is manipulate everything, including public opinion, for one thing. And uh, imagine in a sales meeting where you're trying to get everybody pumped up, you've got to have to, you know, raw, raw, you've got to manipulate them, get them into a position where they actually believe in something that they may not have believed in before. Uh, psychopath lacks empathy. And this simply means that it's very difficult or impossible for a psychopath to put himself inside the, the emotional skin of somebody else. Uh, they may understand at some sort of super, superficial level that this person is going through what could be uh, construed as an emotion by other people, but I don't understand what it is. This is a psychopath's uh, position. Uh, would a company or a corporation actually lack empathy? Well, maybe by definition they would have to. Uh, if you're concerned about uh, the fate of your competitors, uh, and also the general public, uh, you may not have uh, um, profits that are so respectable. And so uh, I suppose this corporation could lack empathy in, uh, in the sense that the psychopath does. Lacks remorse is another characteristic that defines psychopathy. That is, having done something, you don't feel badly about it. Corporation, I imagine, would be much the same, uh, unless one is caught. Now, a psychopath who is caught for committing a crime, the first thing he'll say is, yeah, I'm really sorry I did it, I, I, I feel remorse. But only when caught. And I imagine that most corporations be much the same. Uh, if, you know, if, if some sort of regulatory body finds out what you're doing and if it's considered to be illegal, I would imagine that uh, they would say, well, yes, I, I really, we're really sorry, but otherwise they're not likely to do that. Psychopath doesn't accept responsibility for uh, his or her own behavior. Uh, usually, uh, diffusion of responsibility is the name of the game for the psychopath. Somebody else may be do it. wasn't my fault. It was fate, uh, and uh, I'm not really responsible. Corporations would do this almost routinely, I would imagine. Uh, in fact, they would have public relations personnel whose only job is to make sure that the that this this image is portrayed to the general public. That is, yes. Uh, uh, somebody else, it was fate, it was a political decision, or it was not, the market certainly crashed, and there was a war in some other place, and this accounted for everything. Uh, psychopaths tend to be uh, impulsive, but in a fairly controlled sense. That is, uh, most psychopaths are not going to do things if there's an external control present. The psychopath standing on the street corner is not going to commit a crime with the policeman standing right next to him. On the other hand, if the policeman is not there, if the external control is not there, uh, then it's possible that he or she will do whatever he feels like doing if he has a chance of getting away with it. Are corporations impulsive? Uh, it's, it's difficult to actually evaluate this, but I would imagine so uh, in, in some some cases, particularly if the corporation is not well structured, if the rules and the uh, of, of behavior and the hierarchical structure is not firmly in place, then it would be very possible for a uh, corporation to be to act impulsively. Uh, of course, if you do this, then uh, then you run the risk of actually you know experiencing fairly serious losses. Uh, psychopaths don't 
uh, have long-term goals. Uh, most of their uh, their the things that they're striving for are short-term and could refer to as a short-term form of hedonism. Uh, and corporations, I imagine, are much the same way. In fact, uh, one could argue that sacrificing short-term profits for the long-term potential of making profits would not be in the company's best interest. So almost by their very nature, they would have to uh, lack long-term goals. Now, some corporations, of course, would have a long-term strategy, but at the same time, they'd have these short-term goals that are firmly in place. They've got to go to the next stockholders meeting, for example, and show that there's a profit. Poor behavioral controls is another characteristic that defines a psychopath. These are individuals who are likely to lose their temper very easily, to strike out and do things that are fairly irrational in the short term, but they do it in a very controlled manner. They know what they're doing. Uh, it could be a rea reaction to frustration and so forth. Uh, corporations, uh, th this is very difficult for me to evaluate this, to translate directly into the corporate field. I suppose it could be possible, but I'd have to think about that for some, uh, you know, another four or five years, I think. Uh, psychopaths tend to be irresponsible, and that means that, that their behavior uh, doesn't take into account what's likely to happen to somebody else. They will put others at risk. Their own behavior puts other people at risk all the time. This could be in driving, it could be in their, their personal relations or, or anything they, they do in their, their general life. And corporations, I imagine, uh, could be uh, irresponsible in exactly the same way. That is, in an attempt to satisfy the corporate goal, everybody else is put at risk. This could be other companies. As a matter of fact, I suppose one could argue that this is good in the business sense. I mean, if your competitors fall by the wayside because you are acting irresponsibly with respect to them, that's good. As long as, it's, as you get some sort of goal out of that, some sort of benefit. Psychopaths also tend to engage in behavior that is antisocial or at least asocial from a very early age, and this continues on throughout uh, most of the lifespan. And by this I mean their behavior is not necessarily criminal in the strict sense of the term, but in fact it's harmful to other people, other individuals. You may not take into account the fact that your behavior is going to have negative consequences for somebody else. Corporation could be much the same, uh, and this ties in with irresponsibility to a certain extent, that uh, what they're doing uh, with respect to the general public and to other companies would clearly be looked at, viewed as, or construed as asocial or antisocial. We just don't really care. If a building can't have social responsibility, what does it mean to say that a corporation can? A corporation is simply a artificial legal structure. It doesn't have any, it's neither moral nor immoral. It's simply what it is. But the people who are engaged in it, whether the stockholders, whether the executives in it, whether the employees, they all have moral responsibilities. I mean, every one of us under some circumstances could be, uh, you know, a, a gas chamber attendant and a saint. And, you know, you see a starving child and you can steal food from him and there's no policeman around. Uh, very few people would do it. If they would do it, they're really pathological. I mean, there's some pathological extremes, but ordinarily people wouldn't behave like that. They do behave like that on a massive scale, massive scale, uh, but they're unaware of it. And uh, there's a huge indoctrination system designed to make them unaware of it, and even to make them think that the starving child is stealing from them, you know, so we're the victims. Uh, uh, that's what propaganda and regimentation are all about, and you know, it sort of works, and it uh, erodes the moral character. Uh, uh, it, it prevents you from looking at what you yourself are doing or what your leaders are doing and worry about somebody else. So you see that all, all the time. So the people can be very moral, but they're, they're acting within institutional structures, uh, constructed systems in which only certain options are easy to pursue. Others are very hard to pursue. If you have a business executive who really wants to take on social responsibilities, get rid of him fast. He doesn't have the right sense of priorities and will do a poor job running the business.